Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today is a special day. We are finally going to Bedline Betty. I've already prepped the whole Mustang and I have a video of me prepping it. I basically sanded the entire Mustang with 320 grit. I, I'm going to go ahead and do another quick sanding, touch up one rust spot. And finally, I'm going to remove the headlights, the tail lights. Then I'm just going to mask off the entire Mustang. So I'm going to mask off the windows, the rubber trims, not like it's in great condition, but I'm going to mask it all off. So after I prepped the Mustang, I did go to a drift event and um, obviously I didn't do very well. And at the drift event, I basically hit the guardrails and the bumper is slightly dented up. So I'm gonna clean that up with a Brillo pad as good as I can. Then I'll start painting it after everything is all maxed off and prepped. I'm not gonna move the dent on the fender because that's just more work than I wanna do right now. And ultimately I'm just gonna get a new fender because it's pretty banged up throughout it and that would be a lot of body work to make it look right. After I bedline that fender, it's gonna look pretty uh, presentable. And if this is gonna be a drift car, I'm probably gonna hit it again. So I don't really care. What are those? They're just like coming out from the wheel. They look like little spars. And this is the bed liner that I'm using. It is a red bed liner, or it should be. And it came with two of these uh, rollers, not the, the handle itself, but it came with two of these guys. It's very much a DIY. And if it turns out well, then you can see if you wanna do at home. I think it's gonna turn out great though. I am gonna do two coats. So let's get started. Gonna need a bit more uh, aggressive sanding on this rust spot. Acetone. Krylon stop rust. I know that's kind of aggressive, but it'll be fine. Let's remove the uh, headlights and tail lights. So as you see on this side, I already have the tab that um, tines down off. So you gotta unscrew that. Then you can get access to the tail light. It is 11 and if you use a socket, it needs to be a deep socket. You know, all this time I owned this Mustang, I thought it was ultimately rust free, but I'm joking myself. That is all rust. And you can kind of see it now since, since I know it's rust, all that's picking up. See that? I can, I can put my fingernail on, underneath that. This side doesn't look like that seal is coming up, but the seal on that side is coming up. You can kind of see where the seal starts. So if you have an SN95 Mustang, that might be a trouble rust spot that, that you need to take care of. That could be a problem. When we come back, both these tailors will be out. Oh, a lizard. I don't know if you saw that. Huh. So take photos whenever you move these headlights. It should fit right in place, but yeah. Let's come around to the hood of the car. These headlights are pretty easy. There's two tabs right here that like, picks right up. It's like that, two of these. I don't think this is gonna pop out the way I thought it was. I'll just remove the fog light. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that bullet pad around the whole entire car one last time. I don't know the best spot to put you on because the sun is just like blazing. I'm gonna go ahead and, and sand the rest of the, of the car. So, see you in a minute. All right, so I just finished sanding it once again with the Brillo pad. Now, let's get some acetone, wipe it all down. I'm gonna go ahead and go over the entire car with this one towel, then come back a couple more times until I have nothing on the towel or close to nothing. These shop towels that you can get from like Advanced Auto or something like that in a big box are pretty nice and heavy duty. So if you get one side dirty, you can then fold it up, use the other side. I probably have like 10 sides to this because I use three different paper towels. So I advise you to do the same thing. So you don't waste a whole bunch of these towels. Okay, so the entire car, as what you just saw, has been acetoned. So now I need to go ahead and I get masking tape and mask off all the windows, the cowl, the lights, door locks, whole bunch of stuff. Let's get to it. I know you're cold. 
Come on, buddy. You can do it. A frog that's gonna die. He's very cold. He barely can move. Where do you think he would, he would wanna be? As you can see, we taped off almost the entire car. He's helping me still, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so it's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and wipe it down with some acetone one last time. Here is the instructions. It says to don't shake can to mix. So don't shake it. I thought it said shake, but don't shake it. Clean sur don't clean surfaces with lacquer thinners or any solvents containing alcohol. No, what percent alcohol is acetone? 99%. So I commonly uh, do this. I don't read directions before I start doing anything. Uh, it says don't use an alcohol basically based product to wipe down and prep the, the uh, surface before you paint it with the Duroback because it prevents adhesion. So because we basically spent two hours taping it all, we're just gonna get some damp cloths and wipe it all down with some soap and water, mainly water, some soap. Soapy water, we got some clean water and then we got that towel to dry off after we wipe it down with clean water. So. One more wipe down. Okay, so we got the door back. We got a container that we're gonna put the door back in and we got the rollers over there and that store stick. It's a piece of metal, but that's what we have. Damn, that boy flew. <laughs> Yeah, so you're just waiting for it to fall. Yeah. Oh man, this stuff feels cool. <laughs> I'm gonna start with just that for right now. I'm kind of nervous, but I'm excited as well. So let's uh, let's get it going. The first coat needs to be a thin coat, and I'm and I'm actually gonna paint the whole Mustang first with one thin coat, then come back with a thicker coat. <laughs> that looks pretty awesome. That looks awesome. I like the color. Yeah. That's looking awesome. I forgot, you should always do the hood and the roof first. I'm gonna go ahead and do the hood then the roof real quick. So camera stopped recording, but I painted the entire hood, light coat. That's why it's still a little bit blotchy. Nick is going around and painting the spots that the roller can't get to, and he's doing a fantastic job. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit that roof. Just finished with the second coat. As you can tell, it looks very vibrant and pretty amazing. I need to hurry up and remove the masking tape because it needs to be done while it's very tacky. You wanna pull it at an angle so you don't pull off any paint.
So I'm gonna let this dry a little bit more. Then I'm gonna install the tail light and the headlight and the weather stripping that I had to remove for the paint job. And then I'm gonna be back tomorrow to show you how this looks. So this is basically the final product and I love it. I really do. Um, some people might think it's, it's a bed liner. I ruined my car, but I don't care what to say. I'm extremely happy with this final product. Here's a quick walk around. It's a very vibrant red and it really pops and that's what I was trying to kind of go for. There is a bit of blotchiness. It's not bad, it's not too noticeable, but in the pure daylight, it kind of pops, but that's basically the black beads within the bed liner popping out. And if you're wanting to not have any blotching if you're doing it at home, make sure that you mix the paint thoroughly each and every time you get fresh paint on the roller. That will make a big difference. But as you can see, it's very scratch resistant, durable and heavy duty, and that's what I was trying to go for. I really like that about this paint job. And it's been about two weeks with it being painted, so it's dried, and this is basically what it's gonna look like long term. And it looks awesome. So. One thing I do want to <laughs> just graph about, it's not terrible. See like that? Th that's some fuzz I got stuck and <laughs> this happens quite often. You can basically just brush it off. I still have to re reinstall the, uh, the emblems and such. I'll do that in a different video. More fuzz. And basically just paint the mirrors all black and paint the, paint the wheels. That's be, that'd be basically the next few things I'm gonna do with this Mustang before I, you know, before I weld the diff because the diff is not welded yet. So there might be a few things you're kind of curious about with the Mustang. How much paint did I use? I used about 80% of the doorback can that you saw in the video. I really could have done in the third coat if I wanted to, but I didn't feel like I need to. The acetone, the acetone issue. Obviously, the paint stuck. It's not picking up at all anywhere. That's what I was really afraid of because I did use acetone, which prevents adhesion with this doorback. But I guess the soap and water fixed that issue. That's the answer to the acetone issue. And the paintbrush that my brother used was about this big. And he just touched up small parts like underneath the mirror and stuff like that. That's what he got with the paintbrush. The way he did it, he just kind of blotted it on. So he tried his best to give it this type of texture underneath the mirrors. But it's a bit smoother, as you might expect with a paintbrush. That's how he tried to give it a kind of nice texture. And when should you apply the second coat? When? It's tacky to the touch, like you touch it, so it's sticky, but it does not come off on your finger. So you could touch it, so tacky, but it's not coming off on your finger. That's when you apply the second coat. But I guess the final question is, how much did all of this cost? That is how much the doorback costed. I got that from eBay, and that is the color. On here, it's definitely a bit darker on the phone than on the, the, uh, the hood itself, but it looks great nonetheless and it kind of has the same type of texture, so that's fantastic. But 150 for that, plus shipping, which is $25. Then the paintbrush roller and the, uh, the holder, which came together, I think it was $15. And the small paintbrush, that costed about uh, five bucks, you know, max. About $195 to do this paint job, which is not terribly expensive as far as paint jobs go. And if you're doing it at home, uh, go ahead, do it if you want to, but just know that if you have to repaint the car in the future, this is gonna be very hard to remove. So this is most likely gonna be the final paint job on your car, unless you're willing to um, repaint it over and over with the same paint job, uh, go ahead, have at it. One, th one more thing I wanted to point out is, um, why did I choose the, uh, the color red? Um, one, it was the color of my Mustang previously. Sorry about the squeaking, there's a dog above me. But that's not the main reason why I chose the red color. Uh, my grandma's favorite color, was red and uh, um, it might sound a little silly but uh, before she passed away I basically promised her that I'm gonna have the car painted before she passed away and that she could uh, see it. Um, obviously that did not happen because I just now got it painted but uh, it's, it's still red for her and that's her favorite color and I'm sure she sees it now in heaven. Yeah. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and press that thumbs up and subscribe. If you think I missed something or I could have done something better, go ahead and let me know in the description down below because I'm always eager to learn and do better. I'm obviously gonna have a lot more videos on the Mustang GT. I also have a camper van build I'm doing on the Astro van. And I have a new to me 2008 Tahoe, which I'm going to basically modernize and clean up a bit. Um, it's already super clean, but I'm just gonna try to take it to the next step. Try my best to. And guys, this is Chris Automotivate. Always appreciate and respect one another. I'll see you next time.